it, folks. I have some breaking news. Pauline Pesser is being returned to her grave. I got a notification earlier this evening uh, that she is being returned. I checked on it just to make sure it is true. Uh, I even have some pictures now that I intend to share with you. At any rate, you know, this takes us to a whole new stage in the investigation. Uh, with her being returned, her autopsy report uh, should be completed before too long, if it's not completed already. And that alone will tell us a great deal about her final hours. You know, uh, for instance, things that I would expect it to find, and this, this is only my opinion, uh, I would expect it to uh, show trajectories uh, of uh, projectiles that uh, took her life, the number of times that she was actually shot, uh, it will should show any bruising or defensive wounds that she might have had trying to protect herself if uh, that had occurred. And possibly they may even look under her fingernails for uh, any tissue. If, uh, for instance, if she tried to defend herself and uh, scratch someone, I think, you know, what we're coming up to is they're going to be looking at all this information and trying to determine if Buford was involved, as so many people think he was. His story didn't match uh, so many different circumstances. Uh, he kept changing his story after the ambush. You know, first, uh, you know, he said that there was a disturbance at Hollis Jordan's place on Highway 45. Later, he changed that to being on New Hope Road. And why he made that change, I don't know. We've That's never been really clarified. The route he took was another big issue. Uh, you know, he took a system of back roads from Adamsville down to New Hope Road. When the more logical path to me would have been to take Highway 64 into Selmer, turn left on 45, go straight down to Hollis Jordan's. So, you know, there's a lot of confusion there. Why his story changed, the route he took, and obviously how the ambush party knew that he would be go taking the uh, route down New Hope Road. Uh, you know, it, had it been most people, I think they would have been waiting somewhere on 64. And it also... You know, the question that begs to be answered is why a rolling ambush? You, you know, that is such a risky uh, way of trying to accomplish an ambush when it would be so much easier to have just waited for him to walk out of his home and uh, taken care of the issue there. Uh, the story didn't make sense in regards that Buford had called Paul, uh, or pardon me, Buford. Carl had called uh, Ward Moore, the county coroner, asked him to go over to the house that Buford and Pauline were in a fight and they were going to kill each other. When Ward got over there, Buford and Pauline were gone. There's also LaVon Plunk, who heard a shot come from the home. And then the other night when I interviewed Arnie Hardy, who himself had spoken directly with uh, Diane Vance, he said that Diane Vance woke up to a pop, uh, which I assume was a gunshot, and she was fearful. She, you know, looked out the window, uh, saw Buford carry Pauline out to the car, place her in there. At uh, different points, she even hid under her bed just in case Buford came back in after her. Uh, that's a fearful moment for a teenager to have to go through. Uh, there's been little explanation about the stories that uh, Carl would tell uh, about getting calls that night. Buford would also tell the same thing, which makes me wonder, was Carl trying to cover for his son? Was he trying to, did he know what happened or suspect what happened and was trying to give Buford a way out? Uh, and this wouldn't be the... Uh, first time that something like that happened, I think. This is, this is just my opinion. 
uh, because like in right before that Buford left office, there was a uh, gentleman, Charlie Brown, who was incarcerated in the McNary County Jail and allegedly hanged himself. And Carl came up with the story that, well, he didn't want to be in a cell with the rest of the prisoners. So, you know, that uh, Carl allowed him to stay in the what is generally used as the women's cell where he hung himself out of view from other prisoners. And uh, so, you know, there's, I'm, I guess what I'm saying is it wouldn't surprise me if there was a lot of shady stuff that went on about the ambush uh, as well as the death of Charlie Brown. Uh, manipulating stories seem to be the thing. At any rate, uh, hopefully the autopsy report on Pauline will answer a lot of questions about her death, and it will probably raise a lot more. Uh, this is far from being over. Uh, you know, if it turns out that... Uh, it appears that Buford did misrepresent the facts of the ambush, that he did uh, lie about what was happening, uh, that he was involved in Pauline's death, that, you know, he was sh shot himself to cover it up if he had an accomplice that was there to help him. Or it raises a lot of questions if it was an actual ambush, why they didn't finish him off. I mean, uh, I think that there's a lot of information about that to come out yet, and hopefully it will. Uh, I know I've been told a lot of things over the, the years that uh, I have not shared yet, uh, simply because I wanted verification of it. I, you know, when I get on here and I talk to people about these things, uh, when I speculate, I try to let them know that I'm speculating. It's my opinion. Uh, obviously, you know, there's a, a lot of things I don't know. There's a lot of information that I've received that I've never been able to uh, uh, actually validate and confirm in some way. And of course, the autopsy report will do a lot of that. At any rate, like I say, Pauline has been returned to her grave. Uh, I'm not sure where everything is headed next. I'm sure that uh, the TBI will uh, has a game plan. And again, I my hat's off to him. They took a big risk here in doing this. And obviously, there had to be a reason for them to exhume her in the first place. It's uh, An exhumation is something that you don't take lightly. So I'm sure that they had a very good reason something that they were looking for whenever they uh, exhumed her so time will tell wait and see you know we'll have a lot of information soon i don't think we'll have all the answers real quick but at least we are making progress and like i say my hat's off to the tbi this is something they did not have to do they were taking a risk with their reputation when they did that. And I'm proud of them. You know, they are, like I say, they are not the same organization that investigated the first time. Back then, they were the Tennessee Bureau of Criminal Identification. And, you know, there was a lot of things that happened uh, there with the original investigation that I don't think you'd see happen today. Uh, another thing I'd like to bring up is just like in um, this latest interview uh, that I released with Dr. Jerry Francisco, you know, where he explained the protocols of an autopsy. And, you know, with saying that the local medical examiner, who at the time was Harry Peeler, and the local DA, who was Will Terry Abernathy, uh, had to concur on the need for an autopsy. Now, I always found it strange that they could do that with Louise Hathcock and then not use that report in a grand jury hearing, but yet a sheriff's wife is shot and killed, and either one or both of them didn't want an autopsy done, and that, to me, makes it somewhat political. Uh, shows the interference and uh, possibly for the reason of uh, protecting Buford. So 
hopefully the autopsy will clear a lot of this up. At any rate, I have some photos I want to share. Uh, take a look at them. I'd appreciate your comments. Like to hear what you think about all this. Uh, we're getting closer to the truth every day, depending on, you know, no matter how it goes, uh, it, it's the right thing. Uh, people have always wondered about this. Half the people in McNary County uh, think Buford was ambushed. The other half, it seems like, think that he murdered Pauline. And hopefully there'll be some answers here. At any rate, I'll leave you with that. Uh, as usual, I'll have a video out this next week. Like I said, it will be with Dennis Hathcock. And we will discuss uh, the role he played the morning of the ambush as he did find uh, the second ambush site, shell casings, a uh, piece of her scalp with hair, so on and so forth. He visited with the TBI, eventually took them down to the site where that happened. And amazingly, this is another one of those instances where he was a person that was never uh, interviewed and had a statement made. Uh, so it makes you wonder what was with that, I mean, that is something you do. I, I would also like to find out, for instance, if anyone ever interviewed and took a statement from Diane Vance or Ward Moore or LaVon Plunk that day. I don't think they did. At any rate, I'll leave you with that. Have a good uh, evening, and uh, we'll see you on Thursday. Oh, and I will say, if there's any other information that comes up, I'll be back with it. Thanks.